I want to ask Gabriel and Sarah to come along for just a moment. And if you'll oblige us a few more minutes to dedicate these precious children to the Lord. They're beautiful, aren't they? Come right along and stand with me. And I want you to know this morning, I have never participated in a baby dedication service. But I have Pastor Gray's notes. In fact, he put these notes together several weeks ago when he spoke to these, these two about dedicating these children to the Lord. So you'll forgive me if I read the script a little bit today. But it's been prepared wonderfully well for us. And aren't you glad Gabriel and Sarah are part of our church? Amen. And it's been a blessing to have them here. And this is a happy and a significant occasion. These are good-looking boys, by the way. How would you like to start off with your first children, your first child, and you get it in double? Get it double with a set of twins. How many of you would have been ready for that? Hmm. Got quiet in here, didn't it? Well, God knows who he can trust that with, and he's trusted and trusted these two young people. We've come to dedicate Charles Quincy and Theodore Maverick. How about those names? To the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're obeying, the, you're obeying the words of the Lord. And he said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. You guys have the opportunity to hold some precious cargo in your arms. Mama's taking good care of everybody there, isn't she? Yes, she is, like a good mama would do. And God has placed these young people into your life, but you have an obligation to parent them from the glory of God. That's an awesome responsibility, isn't it? They need our prayers. We need to, by the way, we need to be praying for one another in that regard. And parenting doesn't end when they get big enough even to pay their own way. I, I can't tell you how, how my parents have helped me after they made me pay my own bills. They were still helping me to make some good decisions. One of the best things that they said was pay your own bills, I think. They were very glad about that. But the scripture bears witness of the truth that godly parents dedicated their children to the Lord. Precious Hannah brought Samuel. Joseph and Mary brought the Lord Jesus Christ to the temple. Dad wrote this, we are confident of divine approval as these children are brought this day to be dedicated to God. It's our duty as a Christian congregation to receive them into the care of our church and to minister to them. And church, are you willing to receive them and to care for them? Which if you would, say amen. amen. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7 says, These words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sinnest in thy house. When thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. God has a purpose for the life of these children. I know you're convinced about that, and you're already working in that direction. From the very, from before they entered this world, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't let anybody deter you from that. It's a wonderful thing. Don't refuse this obligation to train them up, and don't, don't, don't ignore it. It's a privilege and a duty. To make, make known God's will in your life and, and, to, and, and, to, and to serve God by helping these children to follow the Lord as you dedicate yourself this day. I'm going to ask you some questions that the pastor left for you. And I want you to answer them. He says this, do you dedicate yourself as parents to bring up your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? Yes. God bless you. Do you promise to instruct these boys in the Bible and the practice of prayer and to guide them in the development of a Christ-like character? To diligently bring them to the services of our church where they'll be taught the way of life. Yes. God bless you. Do you promise to do the best of your to the best of your ability to shape the home life of your child by reading the Bible and family devotions, by your words, by your example, that at the proper age, when they're ready to come to a confession of Christ and come into the fellowship of church, you promise to help them and to nurture them so they can come to Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to say to you, Gabriel, we charge you as the father to build and defend your home. That's your work in which these little ones have come into. What a precious thing. It changed your house a little bit when these guys came in, didn't it? It did for the better. God grant it that your home will be built upon the ideals of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let nothing enter your home that will tend to destroy faith or confidence and mutual love, which with no home can long endure. Let nothing enter your home that will injure the soul of these little ones. Or crowd out the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your responsibility under God. To Sarah, I charge you as a mother to always know the purity of heart and purpose. You have a wonderful mother's heart. If your child grows to know God as a personal experience, it will largely be because you have awakened their faith into a consciousness of God and because you have 
have not turned the truth. You've, you've nurtured the truth of God to help them know and understand that God loves them. It's so much of what you do will help these kids understand who God is and how he behaves. Makes me feel like I have some work to do at my house. How about you? Yeah. We can help them to know how God works. Forgive me for reading the script today. But I want to ask you, having presented your child, excuse me, your children in dedication to the Lord. I want to ask you this. Do you wish to rededicate yourself to the Lord in the spirit of, of a covenant with God that you would live an exemplary life? Would God be in your helper? Do you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord today in this effort? I do. We're going to pray that way in just a moment. We have a little certificate for you. And we have Bibles for these boys. Their names written in there so they can remember this time. You know, they're not going to remember it. We'd like to be so, like to be so wonderful they would remember all this today, but they're not going to remember this. It's your job to remind them. Every once in a while, I have to remind my children, you know, we gave you all to the Lord. I, you know, I don't have to remind them so much as I have to remind myself. I gave them to the Lord. That's the hard part, isn't it? Sometimes I use it like a baseball bat uh, trying to keep them in line. You belong to the Lord. You can't do that. But I have to remember, I gave them to the Lord. God gave me that opportunity. And it's a wonderful thing as you rededicate yourself. We, we have this here to remember this day by. And I encourage you to help them to remember what's happened. And we're praying God's best for you. I don't think I've met, ever met anybody that has more of a desire to raise their children for the Lord. And we have that throughout our congregation. We have some wonderful children who have just been born, and we will take care of their dedications as well. But church, aren't you glad for what's happening in this family? And I want you to know they're dedicating themselves and these, this, these children to the Lord today. But we are entering into an agreement with them that we're going to earnestly pray for them. We're going to come alongside them. We're not going to tell them what to do. But if they ever have a need, we're going to stand ready to hold up their arms. Amen? Amen. And let's commit ourselves to that. And let's just decide to do that as a church family for one another. Let's pray together as we dedicate these children and these precious parents to the Lord. Lord, we come to you today and we pray, Lord, that you would receive these children whom we dedicate to thee and thy service forever. Lead them, we pray, to an early understanding of thy love and protect them in the slippery paths of their youth. Protect them, Lord, from the perils of doubt and from the temptation of sin. We pray that you will replenish them with gifts of grace, that they may serve you well all the days of their lives. Grant to these parents the courage to follow the convictions of their heart. Help them to have a strong allegiance to thee and to thy word. May they know, Lord, that thou, thou wilt help them in order that our church stands ready to assist them. May they never shrink from the large task that's been given to them, Lord. And we pray that you will bless them. We pray that you will keep them. We pray that thy face would shine upon them. And we pray that you would be gracious unto Gabriel and Sarah and their precious sons. And that you would receive glory for their home as they follow you all the days of their lives. And we praise you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Aren't you glad for a church? God bless you. I'll let you guys go back to your seats. and We want to encourage you. We'll make this up. When your hands get empty, I'll give these things to you a little bit later. How about that? Look, he's multitasking. Look at that. They can't be stopped. Two children, quite a responsibility. One child, still an awesome responsibility.